and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I am so glad you're here. I'm Stacey Sims, and each week I will share the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. And whether you're joining me live right now on Facebook or watching and listening after, I'm here to get you up to speed quickly on what's happening with diabetes technology, research, and our community. Now remember, these are headlines and summaries. So to learn more, I will put all of the sources and links in the Facebook comments and in the show notes at diabetes-connections.com. In the News is brought to you by Inside the Breakthrough, a new history of science podcast full of did you know stuff. Here's what's in the news this week. Medicare is doing away with a big barrier to CGM use. You no longer have to show that you are testing four times a day. Now, Dexcom's G6 has been FDA approved for insulin dosing without finger stick calibration. And along with the American Diabetes Association and other groups, they've been pushing for this change for a long time. It becomes official on July 18th. New study all about ever since this is the first and only long-term implantable CGM. The PROMISE study looked at the accuracy and safety of their 180-day system with reduced calibrations. The MARD that measures accuracy, was 8.5 to 9.1, which puts it in line with other CGMs available right now. The rest of the study showed it's safe and effective. Now, in October of 2020, Sensionics, the company behind this, asked the FDA to approve the 180-day wear version. That submission remains. They are also working on a year-long version of this system. A shorter version is already available in the U.S., Really interesting story out of cycling this week. The UCI, the Union Cycliste Internationale, is the worldwide governing body. And they changed a few rules recently, including one banning the in-competition use of devices that capture information on metabolic values, including, but not limited, to glucose. Elite athletes and a lot of influencers are starting to wear CGMs even without diabetes. And one company, Super Sapiens, promises, quote, easier energy management for athletes by doing so. This is one of their ads. Super Sapiens is basically the Abbott Libre with some different marketing. They've been expanding the number of professional cycling teams they're working with, but this ruling may change that. Now, people with diabetes who use a CGM for medical reasons are exempt from the cycling rule change. By the way, in the opposite direction, the Ironman Triathlon has Super Sapiens as an official supplier. We are just at the start of this kind of thing. It'll be very interesting to watch. Great article from Beyond Type 1, looking at healthcare disparities and what can be done for people with diabetes who are deaf. Dr. Michelle Lichman has six family members who are deaf, and just one of the challenges this community faces is that sign language interpreters are not always offered or available. And when they are, they don't always know how to communicate health information. So over the next three years, Lichman is going to design diabetes programs with language in mind as part of a fellowship grant she has been awarded. You may have heard about this big new study from Johns Hopkins saying that people with diabetes in the U.S. have become significantly less successful at controlling blood sugar. In my opinion, it's not being reported completely. Here's the deal. These researchers used a survey that tracks 5,000 individuals annually for many health issues between 1992 and 2002. 44% of the study sample had an A1C under 7%. From 2007 to 2010, that went up to 57% with an A1C under 7. But then from 2015 to 2018, it dropped to 50%. Now, that's not great, but it's still an improvement from the initial starting point. And there's no published information about why. We know the price of insulin has only gone up since the beginning of the study. We've also seen many other pieces showing that one in four people with diabetes in the U.S. rations their insulin. So I would be careful about extrapolating too much about behavior or food from this study. Up next, making a pancreas with a printer. But first, I want to tell you about one of our great sponsors who helps make Diabetes Connections possible. Inside the Breakthrough is a podcast that mixes historical wisdom with modern insight. It's a science show that's also entertaining. I really love it. They cover everything from snake oil to the actual eureka moment. There's even an episode about the guy who discovered the importance of hand washing in hospitals and how nobody believed him. And this actually relates to diabetes. Listen to Inside the Breakthrough wherever you listen to podcasts. Back to the news now. 
And a new paper is out about the gap in women's leadership in diabetes. These researchers say no one has quantified the percentage of women in leadership roles in our community. Well, what they found isn't really that surprising. Women are very well represented in terms of membership in professional communities and very much underrepresented in leadership positions, grants, and awards. They call for dropping barriers and creating environments that get more women involved. And finally, a 3D printing company is hoping to make diabetes research a little easier by printing a living model of the human pancreas. Redily's 3D's novel technology is being deployed within the EU-funded Enlight project and is reportedly capable of 3D printing a biological tissue containing human stem cells in just 30 seconds. Again, that is readily 3Ds. That's the name of the company. The aim of the Enlight project is to develop the living pancreas model for the testing of new diabetes medications to improve diagnosis and treatment. And that is Diabetes Connections in the news. If you like it, please share it and feel free. Send me your news tips, Stacy at diabetes-connections.com. And please join me wherever you get your podcasts for our next episode on Tuesday. We're talking to a family taking part in the PROTECT trial. This is a study hoping to slow down or even stop diabetes in the newly diagnosed. This kid is my son's age. He's 16. He's one year into his diagnosis and he uses six units of insulin a day. And the episode that is out right now is an update from Beta Bionics all about the islet insulin pump. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you back here soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.